really quickly if you need to update your ADB drivers. Um, this is how things should look once things have been installed properly. Uh, Android Composite ADB Interface. If you get a device that pops up with a little exclamation mark, kind of like this guy, um, that's one you're going to need to actually do the update on to make this work. Now that one, honestly, I don't know what's missing there. I'm guessing that's a Motorola-specific uh, feature or driver, but that's not a problem for what we're about to do. You just need to make sure you've got ADB. So if you didn't already have it or you wanted to make sure you had the latest drivers, what you do is you'd right-click on the entry, update driver software, browse my computer for drivers. I'm going to cheat here and copy because I know where my driver is, but you want to let me pick from a list of devices and then click have disk. I'm flying through this here, but this is outlined step by step in our how to get ADB working guide, which is in the Droid X support forums. So I'm pasting in that little path. Now, once you've browsed to the right folder, you're going to have this choice, and this is where you pick the Android Composite ADB interface. Click Next. Windows, in my case, I'm running Windows uh, 7 Ultimate 64 bit tells me that this isn't recommended, but I know that this is the proper driver and it's functional, so I'm going to override and say yes. Should just take a moment. Uh, I've been prompted to reboot. Oh, there we go. On a couple of occasions like this, you really shouldn't need to to make this work. Um, if you want to play it safe and reboot, it won't hurt anything, but I'm in the middle of a video, so I'm not going to do it. So now we have ADB drivers in place. I already know I have the actual ADB application working, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just cut straight to the chase now. Next thing we need to do is on the phone itself, set up and make sure that we're in PC mode. And what that means, I'm going to try and focus this here real quick. Hopefully it's good enough is you go to your status bar, you go USB connections, you make sure PC mode is selected on the top and then click OK. The next thing you need to do is go to your home screen settings, applications, and then development. And here make sure USB debugging is enabled or it is checked. In this case you got the little yellow checkbox. I use the stay awake feature so that times like this in this video I don't have to worry about the phone going on and off on me. So those things done, um, now you ought to be able to come in here and run ADB devices and actually see your device listed. Um, down there, I don't know, it's probably in my MEID or ESN, something like that, and it says device. That tells me the ADB is running, it sees my device, everything is happy, and now I can begin the actual root process. To do that, I've already CD'd, but basically CD into the folder where you have the files that you exploded. You can see here I've got the BusyBox, Exploit, SU and superuser.apk. Those are the critical files for getting this done. Now what we need to do is push these files out to the SD card. So I'm going to go through and push these out. And then finally, this one goes to a slightly different place. The exploit goes to SQLite SQLite STMT Journals Exploit Alright, so now we've pushed all the files to locations on the phone that we can use, and I'm going to go ahead and go into an ADB shell now. 
and you see the little dollar sign that means you're in a shell but you're not SU or root not a super user I'm gonna check my camera focus real quick Okay, now that we're in shell, I'm going to cd to sq light stmt journals and chmod 755exploid. This makes it executable. And then we're going to do a little preparatory step on the phone. I've got the Wi Fi widget here on my home screen. To do this, you could also go into your settings, wireless, Wi-Fi settings, uh, or really you could have done it on the one back. Be prepared to toggle Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for that matter. It works just as well. Uh, depending on whatever you got going on, you might prefer one over the other. It really shouldn't make any difference which you use though. So now the command that we've got to run is dot slash exploit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready so that as soon as I hit enter I can reach over and toggle my Bluetooth so you see I'm shutting Bluetooth off, I'm back at a command prompt, I'll go ahead and turn Bluetooth back on and now this is where you gotta watch your phone alright we're gonna run root shell Excuse me, you don't need to watch the phone for this. Root shell, it asks for a password, it's secret lol. And there we go. You can see now we've got the little pound sign at the bottom left. That means we are root. We have root access. Now that we have root access, we can copy the files that we need into the phone where they're actually useful. So, for example, superuser.apk is going to go to, oh, I can't type anymore, system app superuser.apk. We're going to copy SD card SU to system bin SU, copy SD card busybox to system app or excuse me system bin su system bin busybox you all have to forgive me I've been up all night learning blogging posting getting this ready for everybody okay now we have to chmod again we're gonna do 4755 this time on system bin su and chmod 4755 on system bin busybox and finally we're going to remove system bin root shell uh, leaving that there will create security issues now we should be all set up, we should have root. I'm going to exit twice, you'll notice, once to leave the root shell, go back to regular user, and then again to come back to my Windows command prompt. Now if I run adb shell and then su, I get a pound sign and that confirms that I am root. Uh, from there, if you try to run anything on the phone that requires root access, or actually in this case, um, which you should have seen but you won't because my phone's actually technically already rooted is superuser.apk would have popped up at this point and asked for permissions and you would have checked allow so that superuser.apk had root access so watch for that final step when you come in here and, and run this thanks for following along again uh, it was Birdman over at alldroid.org that discovered and, and compiled and set up this root process. You have him to thank. There is a donation link for him on the page. He's a struggling college student, so please show him your love.